Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today's story is called Home Court Advantage. It's a little bit longer, but I hope you enjoy it. Thank you for listening. Let's begin. Part 1. Steve. I'll give you $50 if you ask Cole out, my friend Robert said. We sat at one of the tables in the cafeteria of the student center. Both of us were juniors. I majored in computer science. Robert majored in engineering. Best friends. You're kidding. He's captain of the basketball team, dated every cheerleader, and has a game Saturday against our rival, I said, making sure my button-down shirt was tucked into my khaki pants. I pulled my glasses off and cleaned off a spot. He's a senior. I'm only a junior. He's also the man you've been lusting after forever and never talked to, Robert said. And wouldn't you know it, look who's sitting right over there. Taking my shoulders, Robert pointed me in the right direction. Without my glasses, I could make out the basics of the student center cafeteria, like tables and people and the food courts. I put my glasses back on, and the room came into focus. Cole sat at a table with two of his teammates, Marcus and Jeff, and a girl, Marcy, one of the cheerleaders. The guys all wore green and gold letterman jackets. The girl wore a black t-shirt. Somebody must have said something funny, because I could hear their laughter all the way over here. I dreamed about Cole for a couple of years. Lean, tall, confident, blonde, everything I'm not. He always smiled, as if he saw something funny that no one else did. I loved watching him play, because he could move the ball better than anyone, and he always made the shot. He's taller than me, I said, and he has at least 50 pounds on me, and it's all muscle. You're the one who asked me for some money. Robert, I don't know what happened. I'm out of money. I don't get paid until next week. Boo-hoo. But Cole, I said, seriously? He's rich. Have you seen his car? You've told me, Robert said. The newest Mustang, custom, blah, blah, blah. Fifty dollars. You ask him out. You won't even have to pay me back. He's a jock, and I'm only a computer geek, I said. Excuses? Excuses. What if he says no, I said. You still get the 50, Robert grinned evilly. You just have to ask. What do I say? I said. If I have to tell you, then I'm only giving you 40, Robert said. He's probably straight, I said. He's always hanging out with cheerleaders. Coward, Robert said. You're the one with the crush. Just ask him. But he's got his friends around him. They'll make fun of me. I said. Robert folded his arms and rolled his eyes. Chicken. I'm no good at sports. What would we even talk about? We grabbed our packs and slung them on our backs. Stop stalling, Robert said, steering me in the general direction of Cole's table. Either you start walking towards him, or me and my fifty are leaving. That's blackmail, I said. No, it isn't. You need to watch more crime shows, Robert said. It's more like hardcore incentive. Robert pushed me along through the crowds and we edged closer and closer and closer. He doesn't even know me. Now he will, Robert said. Fifty dollars. I am going to enjoy this. You're coming? I can't believe how fast my heart was pounding. This room seemed so big. Yet why am I getting to Cole's table so fast? It's my money, Robert said. I have to hear. I hate you. Robert laughed and gave me one final push to their table. I didn't have time to have sweaty palms or sweaty armpits. My mouth went completely dry, and my left foot tripped on my right foot. Robert steadied me. Fifty dollars, he whispered. We arrived. Cole and Marcus sat on one side. Jeff and Marcy sat on the other. They had a pile of tater tots in the middle of the table, 
piles of ketchup. Marcus had a pile of mustard. All four of them laughed at some joke and then stared at me. What do you want? Jeff asked. He usually played forward. Can I talk to Cole for a minute? Jeff mimicked my voice. Mom, can Cole come out and play? Marcy leaned into Jeff and whispered, Don't act so stupid. That's because he is stupid, Cole said. They all laughed. Robert gave me a look that I interpreted as, Get on with it. No, that's not it, I said, staring at the tater tots. I shoved my hands into my pockets and tried not to act nervous. I think I failed. Cole? I bet he's the younger brother of that girl you dated, Marcus said. I bet she sent him over here to get you to call her. Cole tossed a tater tot in the air and caught it in his mouth. No way. She slept with so many people, I'd probably catch something being in the same car with her. You're desperate, Jeff. I'll give you her number. Then she'll catch something new, Marcy said. They all laughed again, even Robert. Robert nudged me. Cole, I said. I bet he's with the cafeteria, Jeff said. I bet the lasagna is finally ready. Cole stood up. You should have said so. I'm starving. No, I said. Will you go out with me? I'm sure the entire cafeteria stops talking at once, at least for five seconds. Then Cole and his friends all burst out laughing. Maybe to a movie or something? They quieted down a little. You don't know me. I'm Steve Larson, computer science major. But I know you, all of you. Marcus, coach, always has you on the starting lineup, I think because you have so much energy. And Jeff, you always make the shots, but you usually play forward. And Cole, you're the captain, and you look really nice in the uniform. And Marcy, you're a really good cheerleader. I think you should be head cheerleader because I think you're much prettier. Thank you, Marcy said. That's my girlfriend you just insulted, Marcus said. I'm ruining this. Mr. Larson is right, Jeff said. Marcy should be head cheerleader. Marcy rolled her eyes. Sorry, I said. I wiped my palms on the pants. I've been to all your home games. Cole, I like watching you play because you're really good. I'll pay. And realized I spoke faster and faster. For the date, I mean. I'm asking so I would have to pay, not you. And we could go to some place nice, like McDonald's, and get a burger. No, that's not date material. That new place down by the mall. I'll buy popcorn for the movie. You like popcorn, right? Everybody likes popcorn. Maybe Saturday? Not Saturday. You have a game. Maybe Sunday or Friday? Jeff and Marcus chuckled and Cole held his hand over his mouth. Real smooth, Robert said in my ear, suppressing a laugh. I ignored him because this would be my only chance to ask Cole out. And I had to make a good impression. If you don't want to see a movie, we could, um... There's, um, an art exhibit we could go to. They don't cost anything, so you don't have to worry about anything. They have a frozen yogurt stand nearby, and we could get something to eat. I mean, snack on. My favorite flavor is the new chocolate one. Do you have a favorite flavor? They all snickered. Jeff burst into laughter. Even Marcy smiled. Cole shushed Jeff up, trying not to laugh himself. Steve, I'm sure you're a nice guy, but I'm going to have to say no. Between Saturday's game and practice and going away for a couple of games... I won't have time this weekend. I'm sorry. Maybe when you get back? There's a new star show at the planetarium that starts next week, and it's running for sex. Everybody snickered at that. I mean, six weeks. We'd have to take the bus because I don't have a car. They all snickered again, and Marcus turned away to keep from giggling. Jeff picked up one of the tater tots and held it on the table. He flicked the tater tot. It flew and hit me right below my belt, dead center on my crotch. He smiled and laughed. It's hard to take you seriously with your zipper down. I can't believe your mom let you out of the house. I bent over immediately and looked. My wide open fly flashed my red plaid boxers. Nothing embarrassing showed, except my pride. I fixed my zipper as the heat raced into my face. They had laughed at me, humiliated me, even thrown a tater tot at me, the jerk. Pathetic little me, thinking I even had a chance with someone like Cole. Why would he even be interested in a geek like me? Sorry to bother you. 
I raced to the doors as everybody laughed, even Cole, even Robert. Robert could keep his damn money. I'd fast for the next week. Marcy yelled, Jeff, you are the biggest idiot. I'm leaving. Wait, honey, don't go, Jeff said. I was out the door even faster than I had marched to Cole's table. Their laughter echoed even after the door swung shut behind me. Had there ever been a disaster this bad? My eyes blinked with unshed tears. The heat in my face really burned. I marched and marched and marched until I reached the bus stop. Then I stopped and stared at the road, not focusing on anything. I had made a fool of myself. It would be so easy to hop on the bus and go back to my dorm and hide. But I clenched my fist, steeled my nerves, and turned around. I was going back to that damn table and tell the man I admired that he was an impolite, obnoxious, rude, mean jerk, that I didn't like him anymore. Then I'd tell Jeff that he was a dick for humiliating me. On my way, I'd think of a couple more adjectives and insults to scream at all of them. I would lay into Cole and his friends just because they were a year older and popular and good-looking and athletic and jocks doesn't mean they get to treat the rest of us like this, me in particular. Robert was a hundred feet behind me. I passed him marching fast and went straight for the student center to the cafeteria. Here's your money, Robert said. Where are you going? I'm telling Cole that I'm never coming back to his stupid games, I said, fuming. Robert had to run to keep up with me. Slow down. I entered the student center, walked into the cafeteria, and walked straight to their table. The tater tots were still there, but they had left. Just forget about them, Robert said. Chalk it up to experience. Now you know they're jerks, so don't waste any more time on them. I hate being made a fool, I said. Do you know how hard it was, going up to them, having them laugh at me? You laughed at me. At least I gave you fifty bucks, Robert said. When you settle down, you might even laugh at this. In fifty years, I said, I liked going to their games. What do I do now? We'll go and boo, Robert said. This time I laughed and grabbed a tater tot. Part two. Cole. That guy, Steve something, charged out of the cafeteria as if somebody chased after him with an ax face as red as the ketchup in front of me. Jeff, you are the biggest idiot. I'm leaving, Marcy said, got up from the table and stormed off. Honey, wait, don't go, Jeff pleaded and followed after Marcy. There they go again, Marcus said. At this rate, they won't be a couple much longer. We better catch them, I said. My stomach had twisted into a knot. A cute guy had finally asked me out. We all had laughed, and I had said no. Then Jeff had opened his mouth and made things worse. I'm not hungry anymore. More for me. Marcus grabbed a couple of tater tots to munch on, and we followed Jeff and Marcy. It wasn't hard. I followed the yelling. You know what, Marcy said. I'm done with this relationship. I'm done with you. He was a joke, Jeff said. Look at him. He's a walking punchline. A computer geek walks into the bar with his zipper down and asks out the captain of the basketball team. Priceless. Priceless, Marcy said. You humiliated him, laughed at him, threw things at him. I'm not dating a guy who never left middle school. It was funny. Even you laughed, Marcus said. You heard what Steve said. Marcy folded her arms and stared at the three of us. He's been to every single home game for three years. You were his idols probably who he wanted to be when he grew up, Jeff snickered. It took him three years to work up the courage to talk to us, to call. The poor guy must have a crush on him. Marcy said, wait until the video gets out that our basketball team publicly shamed one of its biggest fans. I bet the talent scouts will line up for that. Watch our ticket sales go through the roof. See the incredibly rude basketball team trash its own fans. Come on, it won't be like that, Jeff said. He tried to stand next to Marcy and put his arm around her, but she pushed his arm off. You're overreacting, Marcus said. You're right. It probably won't make the news. Nobody will care. It's so cliche. Campus jocks treat everybody like crap. I hope you're proud of yourselves. 
I guess you all need to grow up, too, Marcy said, and left. Marcy, Jeff yelled. Let her cool off, I said, but she did have a point. What's that, Jeff said. You opened your mouth again. I'll see you guys at practice, I said. But it was funny, Jeff said. All of us laughed, and that's the problem, I said, and walked off. The more I thought about lunch, the worse I felt. Why did it feel like my best friend had just dropped, kicked me in the teeth? Three years to work up the courage to talk to the people he admired? Steve had asked me out? And he got a face full of shame in the process. Somebody had the courage to come up to me and ask me out. A cute somebody. Cole, I said to myself, you're as much an idiot as Jeff is. I had an afternoon class, comparative literature, one of the last of my elective courses, but I didn't go. I went to the campus box office. They handled all ticket sales for all events on campus, not just basketball, but also the theater department, specialized art shows, and anything sports. We know each other because we work with each other a lot. I wasn't sure what I was going to do, but I wanted information. I wanted something to make me feel better because I felt pretty bad. Once in the office, I asked the lady in charge a question. Can you tell me who has never missed a home game? That's bordering on confidentiality, the lady said. We were thinking of honoring them at the next game, I said, making up the stories I went. Maybe some type of gift or something. Well. There are a lot of people who have season tickets to home games, she said, tapping into her computer, but they don't always use them. Can you tell who is there every week? They arrive and pick up tickets, just like everyone else, she said. According to this, three people have been to every game. A couple, and a... And a guy that showed up every time we have a home game? You guessed it. Can you give me the names? She wrote them down and I felt worse than I did before. Steve Larson was one of the three. Now what do I do? After what we did, would Steve even show up to any more games? Had I ruined any chance of a normal date? Once again, Marcy was right. Not only had Jeff screwed things up, like he always did, but so did I. Part 3. Steve. Saturday evening. Robert and I went to the game ready to cheer for everybody, except Cole and his friends. Home games on a Saturday have a decent crowd. The stands were half full. Our seats were ten rows up, behind one of the backstops. The cheerleaders came by, passing out wiggle wands to wave whenever somebody made a basket or shoot free throws. Marcy held a basket of wiggle wands, and she gave me a smile. Steve, right? From lunch the other day? Yeah, I said, taking the wiggle wand. Robert took one too. Marcy didn't look like she was making fun of me. I'm glad you came, she said. Have fun tonight. Thanks, I said. She moved to the row behind us. The game started. Marcus was one of the starters. I didn't cheer for him. Cole and Jeff sat on the bench. The cheerleaders led us in a cheer, then performed some kind of routine. The coach rotated the starting players out, and Cole and Jeff took over. When Cole made a basket, we were the only people in our section who didn't cheer. The cheerleaders wandered into the stands, leading more cheers. The school mascot, some guy in a weird tiger costume, wandered around throwing candy. Robert and I cheered whenever anybody did something good, except for Cole. Marcus and Jeff. Then Cole stole the ball, ran almost the full court, shot, and made the basket. Everybody cheered. I relented, because it was a great move. Go, Cole. Did you forget, Robert said. It was a nice shot, I said, and he still has a nice butt. You are hopeless, Robert said. When you want money from me, I said, I'll find someone for you to ask out. Better make her cute. Not on your life. That old secretary in student services. 
She'll say yes, and then what will you do? You are mean, Robert said. I'm starting a savings program right now. Look, I said, nodding at the bench. Cole and Marcy stood by the bench. Cole drank from a, a water bottle. Marcy pointed at us. Cole squinted. He spotted me. He gave a little half grin, and his shoulders relaxed. He pulled Marcus and Jeff over and pointed us out to them. Then he clapped Jeff on the back and said something. Jeff shrugged his shoulders as if to say, I'm innocent. What was that about, Robert said. They're probably laughing, I said, about the geeky guy who made a fool of himself. I wish we had a video of that. You would have gone viral, Robert said. They'll forget about us after a while. Remember, boo them. Halftime arrived. The players ran to their locker rooms, the cheerleaders performed another routine, and a couple of vendors sold giant pretzels or ice cream. The, pre the players ran back out, but instead of running to the benches, they stood in a line in the center of the court, both teams. Then the cheerleaders lined up beside them. The, court, the coaches wheeled out a cart with three basketballs on it. The head coach walked over with a portable microphone and gestured for the audience to be quiet. He tapped the microphone to make sure it worked. Ladies and gentlemen, it's been an excellent game tonight, and we have a good chance of going to the championships. But first, we need to say thank you to all of our fans. The crowd cheered. Both Robert and I waved our wiggle wands and cheered with everybody else. It's times like these that I love the games. The coach continued. If you can believe it, out of our many tens of thousands of fans and season ticket holders, only three people have been to every single game. Those people are here tonight. I had the cheerleaders check. The crowd erupted in cheers again. Robert and I went wild with the wiggle wands. As a reward for their dedication, we have team basketball signed by every player and every cheerleader. The crowd went wild again. Would the following people come on down and get their prize? Nelson Wincott, Elizabeth Wincott, and Steve Larson. The noise in the arena went off the charts. That's you, Robert screamed in my ear. I won? I screamed back. Two, che two cheerleaders ran to my seat and escorted me to the court. More cheerleaders escorted a middle-aged couple I recognized. We had seen each other at every game. Give them a welcome like only we can, the coach yelled. Even the other team cheered. The screaming could have blown out eardrums. Marcy brought up the ball for Nelson. Marcus brought up the ball for Elizabeth. Cole brought up the ball for me. I stopped breathing. He leaned in close and said, I'm sorry about the other day. Give me a second chance, please. Some of the anger inside me drifted away. Before I could answer, the cheerleaders spun me around and I waved the ball like it was a trophy. I didn't have a chance to answer Cole. When I glanced back, his eyes never left me. Somebody from the school press took pictures of us with the balls or us with the basketball team. Something like this had never happened to me before. It made it worth it to come to every single game. Talking to Cole, even for a second, made it worth it. In no time, I was back at my seat. Everybody had to see the ball. Did you forgive him? Robert said, leering at me. I saw him talking to you. What did he say? I told Robert, and then the crowd went wild with some shot we had missed. The score went back and forth. Sometimes our team was a little ahead or sometimes we were a little behind. I couldn't understand how the players could run so much for so long and still shoot baskets. Even though I couldn't play, I loved watching. Cole made layup after layup, basket after basket. In spite of the other day, I still loved watching him jump and shoot and run. Then he was fouled on our side of the court. He came to our basket to make his free throws. Jeff stood on his right. Cole shot the first free throw. The ball hit the rim and bounced out. You can do it, Cole, I shouted. Robert elbowed me. 
Cole heard me. He held the ball and looked at the stands and found me. I waved the wiggle wand and cheered, Cole, Cole, Cole. You don't hold a grudge very long, do you, Robert said. Cole lined up the ball and made the shot. It bounced on the rim and went in. He gave me a chin lift and a little smile. A little more of the anger I held inside melted away. Robert was right. I'm hopeless. Should I ask him out again? I said. If I have to tell you that, Robert said, you owe me 50 bucks. Near the end of the game, our team was up by 10 points. The coach rotated players, giving Cole and Jeff a rest. Someone tapped me on the shoulder. Marcy? Cole wants to see you right after the game, she said. Why? Robert asked. She shrugged. He'll be waiting for you by the bench. Promise me you'll talk to him. Sure, I said. She ran down to the court to perform a final cheer. The team ran around, tossing the ball from player to player as the final seconds ran down. We won. What do you think Cole wants? Robert sang. My zipper's up this time, right? Robert sighed and rolled his eyes. The crowd shuffled out and we made our way to the floor. Cole walked over to me. I told everybody you'd been to every game. Thanks, I said. Congratulations on the ball. Thanks, I said. Robert elbowed me and whispered, it's okay to use two words at a time. Cole must have heard because he smiled a little. Thanks, I never expected this, I said. Walk with me, would you? Cole said. Robert gave me a double thumbs up as we walked down the court. I'm sorry about lunch the other day, Cole said. We shouldn't have laughed. I shouldn't have laughed. Can we start over? I nodded. It's okay. I'm not very good at this kind of thing. Even though I'm captain and on the basketball team, I don't date much. Why? I asked. I don't have time, Cole said. Games, practice, my job, classes. Somewhere in there is homework. My grade slipped a full letter grade when season started and it feels like I don't even have time to sleep. Then I come in, I said, and act like an idiot asking you out. We don't have to go out. It was nice to get to talk to you. The season doesn't last forever, Cole said, and I would like to go out with you. I'll make time. I must have had some dopey expression on my face. Can we try again? Cole said, ducking his head and biting his lip. You won't believe this, but we do have something in common. We do? Cole nodded. My major is computer science too. Maybe we can compare classes, computers, complain about professors. I'd like that, I said. Cole smiled. I'm leaving for a couple of away games tomorrow. I'll be back on Thursday. I'm free Friday. Frozen yogurt and the art exhibit sound fine if the offer is still open. I promise we won't have tater tots and I'll handcuff Jeff to a random railing. If you want, we can take my car. Afterwards, I have a copy of the new Task Force Ultra Black we could try out. The last of my anger vanished and I felt light, like I could float. Before I could say anything, Jeff came up, got between us, and draped his arms around our shoulders. You'll have to get me off that game first. You opened it? Cole said. You left it on the console and somebody had to play it, Jeff said. Friday night, I want you out of our room, Cole said. I'll think about it, Jeff said. Marcy said that the only way she'll get back together with me is if I apologize. But I honestly don't see what I did wrong. I'm sorry anyway. Did you hear that, Marcy? I told Steve I was sorry. Cole snorted. Steve, you only had to put up with him once. I have to put up with him every day. So, will you give me a second chance? Friday. Is six all right? I asked. Don't you mean... Jeff said, is sex all right? Cole whacked Jeff in the head. What's that for? Jeff complained. Come on, Steve. I'll introduce you to the guys. I think you'll like them. They've grown up. Cole took my hand and led me back to the rest of the team. Robert stared expectantly at us, saw Cole holding my hand, and waved his wiggle wand. What did I do this time? Jeff said, following us about ten feet away. I know it's hard to believe, but Jeff was our best man.